All right, I'm, this is Benno from Soaking Disillusion, representing for KXLU 88.9 FM. I'm here with Kicker. For those who don't know, Kicker is a punk band based out of Oakland, California. They play an old, old school style of punk, reminiscent of bands like Rudimentary p and Subhumans, Flux of Pink Indians, and mix the music of classic anarcho-punk bands with lyrics that vary from drinking, eating chips, boredom, and islands full of crust punks, and just general discontent. Very excited to be here, guys. How are you guys doing? Excellent, thanks. Great, and we've been on tour with the Subhumans for a couple weeks, and it's been awesome. Superb. Everything is bloody good, mate. The members of Kicker are Mouse, formerly of John the Baker and the Malnourished, <laughs> Dystopia, <laughs> Dave Edwardson from Neurosis, uh, The Enemies, and Tribes of Neurot. We got Rody here, who's Rody for such bands as Amoebix, Subhumans, this is a Subhumans show after all, Fugazi, so I've heard, Jello Biafra, Neurosis, and tons of other bands, more than I can even count. And we have John, a new addition, on the drums. What's it? I used to play in the new edition, actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's he was actually in Jello's band, Guantanamo School of Medicine. Yes, he's from Guantanamo School of Medicine. It's crazy. Tons and tons of other bands as well. So the first question I want to ask you guys, you guys have been on a West Coast tour up and down from Eugene, your hometown, Oakland, down here to California, Southern California. This is your last show. How do you feel about the tour? Oh, it's been fantastic. Everything was just totally dialed in we've uh, met a lot of uh, old friends and new faces and everyone's just been so awesome and, and hospitable to us and we've been having a blast yeah we've been playing in front of a lot more people than we usually would on our own or even with other bands that we could be opening for and subhumans fan base is definitely very receptive to us it's absolutely the perfect band for us to be touring with there's other bands we like but uh there's another band we probably collectively like more than the Subhumans. Been really good touring with uh, Ruckus as well. Uh, the perfect, perfect band for all th three of us, or you know, for all bands together, was just awesome. Spot on. Ruckus, they're uh, semi-local from Orange County. Great guys, Max, Fern, and I'm actually not sure what the drummer's name is, but Ryan. 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 He seems like a really cool guy. Anyways, what's your input on the tour? Oh, it's been great, you know, and. Uh, one of the best things too is he's got like f literally four generations of people that are coming out to these shows. You know, we we play with from everybody from like 60 years old down to like 15, and it's everybody's just totally behind the music. Some 10 and 11 year olds. Yeah, yeah, 10 and 11 year olds. Yeah. 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 A pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and a grandma with a broken arm. Grandmas with broken arms and 11 year olds giving tattoos. And what I've heard, this 11 year old was amazing at giving a tattoo. So. You guys, not too long ago, actually just a few weeks ago, came out with a new album called Rendered Obsolete. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the recording process for that? Uh, well, we did most of it in our practice room, and Dave handled uh, all of the engineering, and uh, we spent a good amount of time like mixing it ourselves, and then our uh, friend Scott Brown uh, did the, the final touches and the mastering, and uh, we're really happy with it. Yeah, and it came out great, and... I was very happy with uh, the quality of everything, considering I'd never really done a production of this scale. I've mixed a lot of records for people. I've done a lot of mastering. I, I got a little bit stuck. Me and Mouse together got stuck on the mixing, and Scott Brown definitely helped us out a whole ton on uh, getting it sounding way better. But I was uh, very happy with the sounds I got just from our rehearsal room and my mediocre collection of mics and having to do everything initially to seven tracks, which we... Uh, then bounced to tape and uh, all the overdubbing and stuff. It all came out really good. Nice. So I actually have a question for Rody right now. Um, it's funny that you guys are on a tour with some subhumans because what I've heard, you did backup vocals on a subhuman song called Not, uh, Not Me, Not Me, and one of your albums is called N Not You. So... Yeah, uh, and one of the songs is called Not You, actually one of my favorites on that album. Could you tell us if there's uh, any correlation between the two? No, not at all. It's totally coincidental. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we say not this and not that. <laughs> so He actually sang on uh, Not Me last night uh, at the observatory. That's crazy. Uh, I have another question for you guys, obviously. Uh, this is something that I've gotten kind of a... My, you know, not so clear of an answer on, but uh, I want to know 
how did Kicker form? I've heard a few stories, and they seem to be, you know, actually pretty cool from what I've heard. But I'd like to hear it firsthand from you guys. Uh, well, we were at Gilman Street one night, and um, Storm Crow were playing, and it was really raining, and they weren't Storm Crow, but I dubbed them Wankbird. And uh, Mouse and Dave and Toby, the original drummer, asked me to be in a band, and I'd been roadieing for like, I don't know, 35 years up to that point. And I, I swore, I told him, I swore I'd never go to the dark side. But um, they said, no, just come to practice, write, you know, write some lyrics and come to practice and uh, see how it goes. So I went home and thought about it. And uh, the very next week I did, I went to practice and I wrote Krusty Island and, uh, and wrong things. And uh, it, it just jowled from there. And I was just like, right, I'm in a band then. And uh, that, that's how we started. So, yeah, all good. That's awesome. Can I hear a little bit about the conversations from across Gilman Street? You mean about starting the band? Yes. I mean, I think the first part of it was we were across the street at the uh, the former brewery there, the Pyramid Brewery, and Rody was hanging out with uh, our friend Chio and, and uh, her, her son, uh, Lainey. And I remember uh, Rody was singing to Lainey and it just like all of a sudden like like chills just like went down by his spine like why aren't you in a band it's just like wh what why why didn't this not happen like years ago and then it just kind of went like you know down the way it's like oh man we got to get a band going with roadie like he's just a natural like why why didn't this happen and and then what was Actually, it mouse told me that he had just been joking with roadie about starting a band and how he had him pretty convinced that it was going to happen, but he wasn't sure and he wasn't. And Mouse, I think, thought it was still kind of a joke at that point. And I said, there's no way that you're going to start a band with Rody and I'm not going to be in it. And then I think at the end of the night, Rody wasn't really sure if it was going to happen. But me and Mouse spent a few days writing music to some songs. And then Rody, we were going to tell Rody, and I kept forgetting to call him. but Because uh, we were actually staying up late at night making demos for songs. And then Rody called me up and said, uh, is this band really going to happen? And I said, well, we got some instrumental demos. should come down to Mouse's uh, shop that he runs. Uh, he silk screens, yeah, he silk screens uh, posters. And um, we brought Rody in, and the lyrics just fit right away for Wrong Things and Krusty Island. So from there it was a go. That's awesome. And, yes, Mouse on. Oh. It was interesting, too, because uh, a lot of our friends – like when we told them that we had this band going, a lot of them like didn't even believe us. Like I had a uh, our good friend uh, Markley, my old coworker for years. I you know saw him at a party. He's like, "Yeah, we got this new band going with Rody," and he's like, "No, you don't. No, 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 no way. No, no, you don't. You're you're totally full of it." Like and and like a lot of people didn't believe us. And then when we finally did it, like people were really blown away. A lot of people didn't believe us because we spent months and months practicing and uh, didn't do shows and uh but we had stickers and such so they just thought it was you know maybe a made-up band or make-believe or whatever and uh like wankbird. Yeah, yeah like wankbird and uh until we actually fine-tuned it and did our first show and uh people were fucking amazed do you know what i mean i can can i swear on this radio station yeah oh excellent yeah and uh yeah it, we did our first gig at the Parkside in San Francisco with Lower Class Bratz because they were friends of Toby. And uh, everyone loved it. And it you know, just went on from there. And it was brilliant. It was fucking brilliant. That's awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a great story. But, uh, yeah, no, just to throw it out there, Mouse owns a print shop called Monolith Press, and it's in Alameda County. Uh, Alameda, if you, California. Alameda, Cal City of Alameda. Oh, Alameda, California. It's... Located on the old naval base, uh, or just a stone's throw away from the USS Hornet, and a bunch of other ships that are parked there. Nice. Yeah, so if you need quality silk screen, I've seen their stuff. They've done posters for the Melvins. They've done album covers. It looks absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, no problem. And another question, well, I'm just going to keep saying another question because I'm just going to keep asking questions. But uh, one thing I want to know, you guys had uh, Toby from uh, Filth on drums, but now you have uh, John. Can you tell us how uh, that all came about? Well, I worked with John 
with Cello Biafra and Guantanamo School of Medicine for three years, I think. And uh, me and John got on really well on tour. I'm looking at him now. He's not going to punch me, is he? <laughs> and uh, John always came to kicker shows. And when uh, Toby had decided to leave because he, his work schedule or whatever had got too much, and uh, I asked John, and John had come to a lot of our shows. And uh, John Wise said to me, fuck yeah, I'll be in your band. It's <laughs> awesome. Do you have anything? Do you have anything to say about that, John? It was a no-brainer. Like, you know, I would jump to the opportunity, especially in working with these guys. And the whole thing was just where I wanted to be. So I said, yes. I said, fuck yes. Fuck yes. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Toby uh, was a fantastic uh, being in the band, and basically uh, he moved away, and it was just getting too hectic for him. And uh, he's still a very dear friend, and uh, he's actually the man that's still uh, doing our Facebook page. And uh, so, uh, yeah, he's he's still very much part of the the Kicker family. So, that, <laughs> that's great. That, that man. That, so, um, I see your music, like I said, very influenced by. Old school anarcho bands. I, I mean, despite the lyrics, it's very musically similar. I wanted to know wh what specific bands from that scene, you know, Flux of Pink Indians, Subhumans, Conflict, uh, really influ influenced you to do this band because uh, that had to come from somewhere. Uh, definitely subhumans. I think that they were like uh, m almost all of our like early first influences, um, as well as um, I mean most like Crass Records and 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 you know Conflict and bands like that. But also like I think for me and Dave, there's a lot of Southern California bands, uh, Black Flag, Adolescence. Um, but I don't know. I mean, originally we were talking about like being an oi band, and that that didn't work. <laughs> it just didn't like work out. It was just no. well, that's really not where we were, where we're at. You it know, it's gonna be even like, more of a joke than it is now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I think I think we're just channeling the music of our youth. We're just trying to get back to our punk rock roots and just absolutely make it feel like music felt to us all in the early '80s. Um, I come from. I mean, a lot of the similar backgrounds, you know, I like a lot of the Black Flag and, you know, just hard punk rock music. I'm East Coast, you know, I grew up around New York and stuff, you know. You know, I love a lot of, you know, butthole surfers and things like that. So maybe I don't come from exactly the same background, but I like the message and the energy and it's a good fit, you know. And I get to play with a great bass player, too, so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I was uh, like an original English 1977 punk rocker. And I got to see all the major label bands, or most of them. Uh, but I went to school with the Subhumans, and, uh, and I started working for them in like 1979. And the, the anarcho, politico, left-wing punk band scene in England was huge, and had a huge influence on me, Subhumans, and especially Crass. I am a huge Crass fan, and uh, it, it, it made me... Uh, from pistols, gigs and the shit, and I ate passers by. It made you, you know, that was all. That was all great, but I think the uh, actual influence of the left-wing anarcho bands was huge on my life and made me realise what we're fucking fighting against. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think, uh, you know, especially working with Dave and Neurosis, they've moved. They came from that era, knowing Mouse. And uh, I think we just, it was just, it's, it's, it was a natural thing to do. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, and I'm glad that all my bandmates were influenced by that music too. And that's what we make. So, yeah, all good. Nice. I love every band. I have an album from every band that you said. And that's just, that makes me feel good personally, just as a Southern California punk, to know that that, style of music influences you guys up north. I have uh, one kind of obscure question for uh, just punk fans out there who have kind of dug deep into every scene. You guys have a split with Submachine, who actually is one of my favorite Pittsburgh punk bands, along with uh, Caustic Christ and Osrodden, Behind Enemy Lines. I think the Pittsburgh punk scene doesn't get enough recognition. They've got some mean bands out there, and I kind of wanted to know, how would you guys get, like, 
How do you guys know Submachine? That's kind of, uh, you know. Toby was their drummer for a while so when he lived in Pittsburgh. So it was when we did the East Coast tour. And uh, it, we were bound to play with Submachine. Do you know what I mean? And like you say, Pittsburgh is such a great scene. And I thought that as well. And uh, you forgot to mention Kim Fuck. And we actually played with the Six, which is... Uh, Corey from Else Rotten and Kim Fuck's new band, and and they're just as good as any of his other bands. So, and hello, Corey. A, a crucial band to check out from Pittsburgh is the Short Dark Strangers. Uh, amazing stuff. Uh, and you're you're talking about uh, being underrated. They're criminally underrated. Check them out. What was that name again? Say it. The Short Dark Strangers. Short Dark Strangers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Check them out. Yeah, like a mix between Otis Redding and punk rock. That's amazing. I I am I love Otis Redding. I would love to hear that combination. Well, this has been absolutely amazing. I really want to thank all of you guys for letting me interview you, and it's made one of my dreams come true to actually get this interview. And I, just thank you so much. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's an honor. Thanks, a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much, and I would really like to say this. A big thanks to the Subhumans and, and Raucous for this wonderful tour. That's Greg Daly. <laughs> Greg Daly. And Spinach. Yeah, Greg Daly, Spinach, Jimmy, all the guys in Subhumans, Max, Fern, and Raucous, the Grim Tonight, you know, Southern California Punk Rock Show. It's sold out. It's going to be crazy, and we wish you were all here to be here with us. Once again, thank you guys so much. And this is Benno from Soaked in Disillusion, KXLU, and I'm signing off.